Wow. 2020, been quite a ride so far. Got my COVID beard, I'm ready to go. Everything is coming up roses, next. Hi, this is Daryl, once again on Sea Life TV, and I appreciate you being here today. Today's reading is from Everything is Coming Up Roses. I wrote this last year and uh, posted on Facebook and stuff, and I thought today might be the day to do it. So first of all, we're right here in June. I'm doing this, and I live in North Carolina, and I have a coat on and long pants because it's June 16th, I think I'm taping this. And um, it was like 58 degrees. And you're like, okay, 2020 keeps on coming. Maybe, I, I think the murder hornets, I think they're gone. I think we got that. We got the, you know, the COVID-19, we got the, the, the riots and the protesters. Uh, uh, I mean, we had all kinds of fun, but Everything is coming up roses. This is just what the world's gonna do. Birth pangs, the world's gonna go crazy, the world's gonna be nuts, it always has. Anytime you get into the mob, anytime you get into the, the group, it's gonna be fun. Anyway, let's move forward. I just needed to document, I could actually grow facial hair. I know it's not pretty, but it is something. And so today again, this passage, everything is coming up, roses, is from 2 Samuel chapter 6, verse 11. This is from the NASBS, which is not the New King James Version or the King James Version, uh, but it is, it's a version. Let's just say that. <laughs> okay, 2 Samuel chapter 6, verse 11 through 12. Thus, the ark of the Lord remained in the house of Obed-Edom the Gittite three months, and the Lord blessed Obed-Edom and all his household. Wow. The Lord blessed Obed-Edom and all his household. Now, it was told King David, saying, The Lord has blessed the house of Obed-Edom and all that belongs to him on account of the ark of God. David, when he heard that, he went and brought up the ark of God from the house of Obed-Edom into the city of David with gladness. Amazing. David had put it there in the first place, the ark into the house of Obed-Edom after uh, Uzzah, when they were bringing the ark back from a city where it had been for 20 years. But he was bringing it to Jerusalem to be in this place or in his tabernacle that he had prepared for it. Um, and it was... Uh, Uzzah reached out and touched it, and God struck the guy dead. And so, you know, so that happened in your Sunday morning service. You'd be a little discouraged maybe, and you may go, you know what? Wednesday night service is off, and that's kind of what David did. You know what? Put the ark over here. That, that guy's a Levite. Put it in his house. Just leave it here. I got to go talk to God. And, um, oh, David was scared. I mean, he truly was terrified. Anyway, once he saw the blessing, it was amazing. He was going like, wait a minute, maybe God hasn't abandoned us. So what, why was Obed-Edom blessed when they brought the ark into his house? What did he do or what had he done to deserve it? The answer in uh, biblical terms and in, in um, doctrinal terms is nothing. He did nothing. He did zilch, zero, not, zip, zippo. Nothing. He just was there, showed up on his doorstep. Yeah, come on in. The kids and his men showed up and dropped the ark of God off in the guy's living room and then just left and said, look, we'll get back to you. Got to go. See ya. By the way, don't touch that. <laughs> I'm old enough to remember MC Hammer. Yes, don't touch that. Dun, 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 dun. Anyway, <clears throat> never mind. So why was he blessed? Let's get on to it. All I know is that God does love to bless and increase people. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. That's kind of a blessing to be dead in your sin and trespasses. 
and then to be alive because of what Christ did, that's a blessing. The Bible is filled with blessing and increase from, uh, from top to bottom and all the way up to the cross of Jesus Christ. The blessing of God being made flesh and being ripped apart for the, on the tree for us all. That was the blessing of God. Him being ripped apart, his blood being spilled, was the blessing of God on us. So why was Obed-Edom specifically blessed? And why was Jesus the blessing of God sent to the world? Well, I believe that most people can quote what I just read. For God so loved the world that he gave. That is why Obed-Edom was blessed. Because God loves to bless. God so loved the world. God loved Obed-Edom. It didn't matter where he went. The presence of the Lord brings blessing. What is it? Uh, Proverbs chapter 10, verse 22. The blessing of the Lord makes rich and he adds no trouble to it. The blessing of the Lord makes rich and he adds no sorrow or toil with it. It's hard for many believers to preach that or to even believe that because they've been preached so long that if you're not suffering, you're doing it wrong. And I'm going, well, dude, you don't need any help from God to suffer in this world. You're surrounded by crazy people. I mean, yeah, we're crazy, but they're a whole different level of crazy. Once the report had come back to David about Obed-Edom, that he was being blessed, and his entire household, not just him, they were being blessed, he went and brought God's presence back to Jerusalem. Imagine what kind of blessing it must have been to reach all the way back to Jerusalem and the notice of the king. Everything Obed-Edom had or did was blessed, including his entire family. Even the no good, you know, loafing uncle over there that sits on his porch watching TV. When David heard the report of that blessing, he was reminded of God's kindness and love and his abundant mercies and grace. And he raced back to Obed-Edom's place and brought the ark back to Jerusalem. A bittersweet day for Obed-Edom, to be sure, but a glorious, glorious day for all of Israel. The ark of God was where the Lord chose to dwell. He did not dwell in the ark. His presence dwelt on the mercy seat on top of the ark, above the ark. That is where all of his dealings with men would come from, the place of mercy, grace, forgiveness. To this day, he's between, or he was between the cherubim and over that mercy seat. But now we know that that was fulfilled and his mercy was poured out to the whole world at the cross of Christ Jesus and his son. Inside of the ark, at that time, the tablet with the Ten Commandments was in it and the people had failed to keep it over and over and God had forgiven the Ten Commandments. Still, he don't break these or you're going to have bad times, but he kept forgiving them. A jar of manna was also there at some time. Maybe it was there then from when the people had complained to God and God supplied. And the rod of Aaron that budded in the holy place overnight uh, when Korah and many of his other leaders had rebelled and revolted against ch ch uh, God's chosen priests, that was also there. Three things that were the failings or sins or shortcomings of the children of Israel. The Ten Commandments, they couldn't keep it. They did. I mean, they went after other gods. They, well, they, they broke it. They couldn't keep it. That ark or that tablet is in the, I mean, it was broken the first time. Remember when he brought it down the first time from the mountain? Moses threw it and broke it before he got to the camp. And so the second thing that God wrote out on the tablets Moses brought up that ended up in the ark, the shortcomings of Israel under the mercy seat. And then there's the manna when the children of Israel were going like, what is it? And they just kind of like, ah, but we want meat. They just kind of uh, despised or didn't like what God had given them. And, and so it was, it was counted there also as a, a failure. He brought bread from heaven and they weren't satisfied. And that was put in the ark under the mercy seat. And then there's the rod of Aaron that budded. This was when Korah and a bunch of leaders in, in the camp of Israel rebelled against the leadership of Moses saying, hey, we're anointed too. 
You know, don't lord your thing over us. That's just crazy. And uh, God, God wasn't happy with that because back then he was very specific. <laughs> Moses was his guy. And um, so anyway, the earth ended up opening and swallowing Korah and his entire family. And a um, um, uh, plague broke forth, not COVID-19, but a, a plague broke forth in uh, the camp and killed a bunch of them. But that rod, uh, the next day, they said, let's bring this rod in here. Or um, I think it was, yeah, somewhere, may, may have the timeline wrong before or after, but the rod they brought into the house of God and the rods of all of the leaders of the 12 tribes. And the, th the priest hints was, hey, whoever's rod, these are sticks that, you know, limbs that have been cut off and carved or whatever. And they were like a symbol for the tribe and mantle or whatever you want to call it. But this rod uh, of Aaron, when they came back the next day after these rods had spent the night in the temple or in the tabernacle, uh, his had put forth buds and brought out almonds. I mean, not just started growing again, but brought almonds. So it was just God saying that man anointed is Aaron and Moses, the leadership. That's the way I'm choosing to do it. So all of these things were failures and rebellions and sin that were put into the ark. But they were out of sight. God had them under the mercy seat and he sat above the, in, he was above the mercy seat between the two cherubim who were bowed inward with their wings out covering it. It was, that's where God spoke to us. That's what God always dealt with us up to the cross. It was from there, the mercy seat. <clears throat> and on this mercy seat where the high priest sprinkled the blood of the innocent lambs to cover the sin of Israel once a year. That's the place it was. He would sprinkle the blood of the lamb on that mercy seat once a year to atone for the sins of Israel. Now, all these things pointed directly to grace, mercy, or hesed, hesed, kindness, favor from God being poured out on the cross uh, uh, through Jesus Christ. His blood then being sprinkled once for all time for all men to wipe away, not cover as it did in the Old Testament, not cover sin, but in the very heavenlies before God, in the heavenly places, he took his blood and sprinkled it on the heavenly place, the heavenly throne, and said, paid for, Father, by the blood of your son, Jesus. They're forgiven, and God was satisfied. So why was Odom, Odom, Odom Edom blessed? Obed Edom, I got it. <laughs> Do we really care why? Honestly, he was blessed. It's all we need to know. God came to his house and he was blessed. And his entire household, that is who God is. That is what he does. And that is why he sent Jesus. He so loved you and me and the whole world that he gave his only son that whosoever would believe on the Lord Jesus Christ might be saved. Blessed, blessed, blessed. No matter what you've done, your rebellion, your sin, your omission or commission forgiven once for all time forever by the sacrifice of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Now, in real estate, there is a term that answers the question of why was Obed-Edom blessed? And that, that question is, uh, or the answer to that question is, what are the most, or the question, yeah, what are the most three important things in real estate? And the answer is location, location, location. That is what happened to Obed-Edom. Suddenly, his location was in the presence of God. Location, location, location. And when the Most High Blessed Redeemer lives within you, it will have an effect on your world and your entire family. Now, by faith in Christ Jesus and his finished work on the cross, we receive God's presence in us, his spirit living in us continually. This will cause blessing to come on us, on our household. And because the blesser, he's taken up residence in us, everything that we do will be blessed. 
The darkness endeavors to tell us by circumstances, betrayals, depression, sickness, lack, and so many other things that we live in a bad location. Whether it's, you know, debt or lack or sin or depression or despair or any, we live in a bad location. But if you've been born again by faith, your location now is in Christ. You are located in Christ. And sin, sickness, disease, and lack no longer have access to your neighborhood. The darkness, Satan, the accuser, is a liar. And his pants will indeed soon be on fire. Believe again. Breathe again. Hope again. The view from our permanent location in Christ Jesus, in Him, is beautiful. Everything, everything is coming up roses.